video guide illustrates how you correctly and accurately create a floor plan for a house using SketchUp software. Examine how the toolbars and tools display in this presentation before you proceed. You may want to replicate these settings in your SketchUp if you intend to utilize this exact method, especially if you're a beginner. The key principles presented suit any drawing software and can, with a few exceptions, also apply to mechanical drawing, that is, with real pencil and paper. SketchUp's free software, Make, can achieve all of the steps performed in the presentation so that you can practice what you learn without investment and later decide which software suits your needs. As well, this example presents with imperial measurements, but you can use the same methods for metric dimensions. The plan developed within this presentation is previously solved, so keep in mind that developing a new design takes longer than this video. Also, this video demonstrates the design development step which means that you would have already worked out a suitable scheme for your project based on the project requirements. For the purpose of brevity, the presented plan is small, just 660 square feet, and a dimension that is 30 feet wide and 22 feet front to back. This presentation is intended to give you a familiarity with developing floor plans, but not be comprehensive. There is much more to learn. The presentation requires familiarity with SketchUp, but only at a beginner's level and the tutorial employs a Mac platform, though you can apply the same functions on a PC. Set up your SketchUp to use your choice of dimensioning and select the architectural style format if you have not already performed this task from previous SketchUp use. Note that if you use imperial dimensions, typing just a number gets you a dimension in inches. But if you want a dimension in feet, you must enter a foot marker after your number and then enter any remaining inches with or without a quotation mark sign after it. Open a new SketchUp file. It will display in 3D. Change it to 2D by Menu Camera Parallel Projection and click the top of the house in Standard Views. Using the Tape Measure tool and guides, draw a rectangle 30 feet in the red direction and 22 feet in the green direction. Reverse faces if you like. Grab your offset tool and drag inward and type 3.5 to define an outer wall that is the thickness of a 2x4 stud wall. Key principle. Draw structural elements, such as walls and posts, at their true dimension. This aids in dimensioning for construction documents. Whether using imperial or metric dimensions, represent stud walls, block walls, and any primary structural components realistically. Position 3.5 inch interior walls to define rooms. Here, living area on the left, foyer in the center, and bedroom, bath, and kitchen on the right. For a coat closet behind the foyer, set another wall 25 inches behind it. This 2 foot 1 dimension allows a minimum of 24 inches for hanging clothes once the drywall is installed. Key principle. Since you indicate walls at actual physical dimensions, leave space for finished materials such as drywall, to ensure final fit. Next, set another wall about 9 feet in from the rear, which will define where the kitchen and bath belong. Go back to the foyer space. Measure to the center points where the blue dot shows up, and measure 18 inches from the centers to create 36-inch openings for the foyer, two living, and coat closet door. Behind the coat closet, we can also set the same depth for a bedroom closet in the opposite direction, which leaves space on the living room side for a fireplace. Set the bath in the right rear corner and thicken the exterior wall to 5.5 inches, indicating 2 by 6 studs. American toilets need to back up to the thicker wall to host the 4 inch diameter vent or soil stack. Set the width of the bath at 61 inches, which allows a standard 60 inch length tub to fit within the space. Key principle, learn standard dimensions for common household fixtures so that you design for them to fit without wasting space. Standardized elements include plumbing fixtures, appliances, doors, and windows, among other items. In this plan, we also need space for a stacked washer and dryer, which belongs between the bath and kitchen space within about 37 inches of width. Doors, as mentioned, come in standard widths and 28 inches is typical for a bath so place a doorway of this size between bathroom and bedroom. Bedroom doors range from 32 inches to 36 inches in width, so place a 32 inch doorway 4.5 inches inward from the wall 
allowing the door to fold 90 degrees onto the adjacent wall where a door stop or buffer can be placed. Now, go back to the kitchen space and draw lines 24 and a half inches inward to indicate base cabinets. Standard base cabinet depth is 24 inches, and we want to account for that extra half inch of drywall in the finished building in case a dimension becomes critical. Key principle, consider how features function within a plan, such as how appliances open, so that you allow for them to operate properly and without interfering with other elements. It is a good time to indicate doorways between the kitchen, living, laundry, and bath. Set a center guide to mark equal distance between base cabinets. Go 18 inches either side of that to establish 36 inch wide doorways. Then adjust the laundry and bath to be 32 inch widths. The file needs saving, just noticed, so we'll do so now. As a habit, keep your model files to the hard drive when you begin. Time to start inserting exterior doorways and window openings. Place a 36 inch wide opening for the front door straight across from the closet door. Place a 60 inch wide opening for a potential French door out the back of the dining space. Note that we center openings within interior walls. For this project, 36 inch wide double hung windows suit the cottage theme. Set the windows six feet on center from the building corner for the windows on the side of the house at the living room. For a second bedroom window on the other side of the house, set it at four and a half inches forward from the bathroom wall. Begin to position the closet door and consider the width necessary for a pre-manufactured 36 inch wide fireplace. Leave three foot eight inches from out to out wall dimension for the fireplace. It looks as if the space for the fireplace and bedroom closet appear too tight. Check the dimensions of the foyer coat closet, and kitchen. The kitchen measures slightly too wide, front to back, for this small house. From the outside rear wall to the inside kitchen wall, we need 9 foot 2 inches. Key principle. Whether using SketchUp or another CAD program, you want to set up your initial layout and walls in a way that allows you to easily adjust room dimensions. This helps you to make changes quickly. SketchUp easily solves the misaligned dimension if you set up your plans as illustrated in this presentation. Wall lines easily slide, though you must be cautious which lines you select to adjust to the desired dimensions. Once we slide the walls, we adjust the door centering to coordinate the change. Returning to the fireplace and closet space reveals that the dimensions work out better for this layout. The leftover fireplace space suits the placement of a return air duct indicated by the X. The bedroom closet is the only spot left that lacks a doorway opening. Set a guide in the center, measure out from there to a typical closet door size, such as 60 inches. Don't forget to adjust that side bedroom window since we changed those walls. At last, a suitable layout emerges. Time to paint. Run through your walls and erase the joints made during plan development. Catch any other openings that need representing, such as the firebox opening, before moving to the next step. For your plan to read better, consider filling in your walls with a shade of gray. Grab the paint bucket tool and start filling in the walls. The floor plan becomes more graphically interesting with this effect. Key principle. Drawings must read clearly and convey emphasis on the elements essential to the purpose. Depending on how you generate your images and presentations, Consider methods to improve graphic representation, whether by shades, textures, colors, or line weights. Time to check dimensions at the laundry and kitchen spaces. It looks as if we make the laundry slightly narrower, going from 37 inches in width to 34 inches in width, will help dimensions in the kitchen, which needs a bit more space. If you have yet to indicate all openings or windows, you must go back and place boxes to represent them as shown here. The laundry space needs a window to give it natural daylight. The kitchen certainly needs a window above the sink to have a view into the backyard. Now you can place a line at 32 and a half inches inward to indicate the tub position in the bathroom. Standard tub widths are either 30 inches or 32 inches. Insert a 24 inch wide window into the bathroom above where the toilet locates. Let's erase this stray wall mark to keep the drawing tidy. Key principle, 
Floor plan symbols enhance legibility and aid in identifying essential features in the design. In SketchUp, components or groups serve as plan symbols. If you intend to design with SketchUp, you must learn how components and groups differ and how to use them correctly. I keep floor plan symbols that I use in a component library. First, we will insert a front door. Notice that it is half open because this door stays closed most of the time in real life. The bedroom door indicates a 90 degree open position because these doors remain commonly ajar. Also, I group my components to keep the model organized. For the coat closet, one 36 inch door is awkward, so we opt for a double 18 inch half open door and place this symbol. The bathroom gets a 28 inch wide open door. The closet gets a bifold door symbol. For our closets, a row of hangers with a couple askew provides a quickly identifiable graphic reference. In SketchUp, you can easily resize them to fit the rod length. Don't make them deeper because that dimension, 24 inches in hanging depth, is an essential reference point. Key principle, have graphic representations hint at their function or use within a floor plan. For example, show door swings either closed or half open depending on their typical use, and illustrate closet features by accurately dimensioned hanging space. It helps to keep a good variety of elements that frequently appear in floor plans, such as a fireplace symbol. These are meant to represent manufactured fireplace units, and there is a 36 inch and 48 inch width in this component library. The firebox needs an adjustment, which is easy to handle. I also want to check to see that this fireplace centers on the long dimension and that checks out. You can add a box to represent a hearth as well. Refer to local building codes for fireplace design dimensions. Time to add bathroom plan symbols. Select a 32 by 60 tub symbol, rotate if necessary, and pop into place. Note that the fixture is drawn at the 61 inch by 32 and a half inch dimension to fill in where drywall will occur in actual construction. Place an elongated toilet underneath the window. In current American building codes, toilets need clearance 15 inches from their center line, as well as 24 inches in front of the fixture. This means that finished dimensions need to allow 30 inches in clear width for the water closet. Always refer to your local codes to determine your requirements. Place a rectangle to indicate a cabinet for the sink location. Bath cabinets typically measure 21 inches in depth, so 21.5 is shown here to account for the drywall and then 36.5 inches for the length. You can see that we have 34 inches between the sink, cabinet, and the tub, which meets our needs. Initial door placement between the bathroom and the laundry closet now feels a bit awkward. Fill in that wall and update the shading. At the doorway between the laundry and the kitchen, a pocket door works best because it avoids having a door swing in the way of this small space. Key principle. Examine how door swings operate within the plan. Doors that open to 90 degrees where they meet a door stop on a wall are best. Check that doors do not interfere with the function of other elements. Pocket door cavities, for instance, cannot host electrical boxes. Notice that we choose a pocket door plan symbol and adjust the plan detail to accommodate this feature graphically. Also, be sure that you keep the plan symbols grouped as you can witness in this sequence. Tackle the placement of kitchen features next Grab a sink, dishwasher, range, and refrigerator from the component library and position the fixtures functionally. In SketchUp, use the flip feature to help position components. I recommend a keyboard shortcut for flips. It helps to create components that reflect the dimensions of actual fixtures. Here the dishwasher is drawn at 23 inches in width, though you always allow a 24 inch wide space for this appliance. The sink is scaled to fit a 36 inch wide base cabinet and this range is 30 inches in width, which is a standard size. Key principle, carefully consider placement of kitchen appliances because tolerances for their features, such as how they open and their relation to utility supply like gas or electrical, affects their ultimate function. Many building codes also mandate how you place appliances to satisfy mechanical systems. For purposes of illustration, place a line 12 and a half inches away from the wall to represent an upper cabinet. Moving to the dining area, place a 60-inch wide French door symbol at this opening.
consider that French doors have active sides and passive sides, which you designate in final drawings. My component library has a window symbol that I place and then alter as necessary. You might create different representations for different types of windows, so take that into account as you indicate them in your plan. In SketchUp, identical components all change if you change one. To override that function, select the component, right-click, and then select Make Unique. If you decide to use SketchUp, this function is beneficial, but you must learn how to use components first. Within this plan, I select a component and adjust it to be the desired dimensions and then copy it. Make Unique, which allows a similar symbol for windows of other sizes. Go around your floor plan and catch all of your windows to complete this step. This design needs a built-in architectural feature at the small dining area. These triangular shapes represent a built-in corner cabinet. Though these are drawn right into the floor plan, it is better to create them as groups or components and then place them on the project. It looks as if we lack a floor plan symbol for the stacked washer and dryer. Grab the side-by-side -side washer dryer component and alter it to serve the purpose of this plan. Check actual appliance dimensions when designing for a specific brand and model. This floor plan illustration is nearly complete. Viewing the whole layout, it looks as if it could help to indicate a front and back stoop. American building codes require specific dimensions and types of surfaces to locate immediately outside of exterior doors. In this case, a 36-inch stoop in the outward direction from the door can transition to three risers to indicate a configuration for an entrance approach. Representing a specific material is not crucial at this stage, but it is essential in final drawings. You now have a fully developed, accurate floor plan indicating doors, windows, cabinets, and fixtures. Speed and flexibility are the goals of the presented method. SketchUp Pro allows export into several different file formats, including DXF and DWG, if you wish to open and continue your work with a different software. Of course, you can also continue working in SketchUp and develop three-dimensional models. We will save that exercise for another time. Recess!